Good morning, everybody. Hi, I'm Ellie Powers, and uh, I'm a product manager here on the Google Play team. We have so many different announcements about what's new for all of you app developers on Google Play that we had to create one session with a whole bunch of people to take you through all of them. But before we get into that, I want to take a couple minutes to talk to you more about why I'm really excited to work on Google Play. I've been on the team for about four and a half years. And uh, one of the things that really gets me excited even now is really meeting each of you and hearing your stories. For every app and game on the Google Play Store, there's a real story behind it. You know, I love hearing, how did you come up with that idea for that newer app or game? What's really special about it to you? And I love trying out all the different apps and seeing how they work. And I love hearing about what happens after you launch your app, how it's helping you build a business, and how you're using that app to really transform people's lives. So, before we see what's new in Google Play, we're going to see a video and take a look at some of your stories. Let's play the video. I started running in marathons to raise money for Parkinson's research in honor of my grandfather. I always had this idea that if I could get enough people together, then collectively we would have the clout of a celebrity, and then companies would want to sponsor us. Being on the Android platform has enabled us to reach people all over the world. They can help raise money for our charity partners, and it's helped make our movement a global one. It's really cool to take your hobby and put it into your full-time job. Talk is an Android app that allows you to see all the sensors on your vehicle and to look at the fault codes. From the way it's happened on the Google Play Store, I've touched over a million people with the app. The community has dragged me along with it and told me what they want. I've done that for them. I'm very grateful for where I am now. And it's staggering to see that something I've written for my garden shed is liked by that many people across the planet. We started right after university. It was myself, my husband, and his brother. Making games was our childhood dream, and this is what we wanted to do. Since we released Cooking Fever on Android, it totally clicked. We realized that this is the way to go, and this is the platform of the future. We had millions of downloads in the first months. When we started, it was just three of us, and now we're a company of over 100 people making games that we decide we want to make. This has been a very successful dream. I really love watching this video because it really shares the diversity of different developers that we have here in the Android and Google Play community. So now, let's get on with what's new on Google Play this year. Here at Google, we found that we build the best products when we're able to launch and iterate our products using user feedback. Products like Gmail, Chrome, Maps, and Google Search are all great examples of how we've been able to do this. And we want app developers like you to be able to do the same things. So Google Play has been giving all of you the biggest user base, right? Access to a very wide range of people all around the world. But now it's also become the best place to optimize your apps, to take on user feedback and to make the, measure how your app is doing and to make those little tweaks to make your app truly great. So I mentioned that I bought, brought a, a big team of people to help me deliver these announcements. So lightning talk style, we're going to bring each of them on to share something new on Google Play with you. And with that, I'd like to bring out our engineering director, Miles Barr. Hi, I'm Miles Barr. I'm here today to talk to you about the pre-launch report. It's an exciting new feature that we launched at Google I.O. this year. The pre-launch report is built on the Firebase Test Lab. The Firebase Test Lab is our data center of real Android devices where you can test your app. It allows you to test your app across a variety of devices, Android OS versions, and languages. It's already performed over 1 million tests for developers like you. You can run your own custom tests straight from Android Studio or from the Firebase console. Beta testing has always been one of our most popular and powerful features. But we wanted to make it even better by performing a comprehensive set of tests on your app before it goes live. You can now opt in to generating a pre-launch report for every APK you upload to the alpha and beta channels in Google Play. Releasing a new version of your app can be an exciting time, but you want to make sure everything goes right. 
After about an hour, you'll get a report summarizing any issues we found when testing your app. The first thing we look at is the stability of your app. We use the Firebase Test Lab to run your app on real devices, telling you on which devices your app crashes on startup or if it crashes after a deeper crawl of the app. This means it won't be your users finding the crashes and giving you one-star reviews. We also show you what your app looks like on these different devices. You get to see how it looks like in different screen resolutions, Android OS versions, and languages. This allows you to spot any problems, such as overflowing text in your translations, before your app goes live, allowing you to fix, it quick, fix them quickly and easily. The final part of the report highlights any security vulnerabilities we find. This includes any versions of third-party libraries with known vulnerabilities, or if you've accidentally followed any security anti-patterns. Previously, this information was only available after your app's gone live. The pre-launch report brings all this information together, telling you about these potential issues, allowing you to fix them before your app goes to production, ensuring that you and Google Play give your users the best experience possible. Now, I'd like to bring on stage Kobe Glick, Product Manager for Google Play. Thank you. Thanks, Miles. Hi. I want to talk to you about beta testing. Beta testing is the most popular feature on the Google Play developer console. 60% of the top 1,000 apps on Google Play are running a beta test right now. And users notice it. Apps that run a beta test have higher rating on average. Last year, we made it easier for users to discover and join beta programs. With open beta, it's as simple as clicking a URL. We know that you love and use beta testing, and we often get developer feedback like the one you see from Pocket, telling us how beta testing helps them connect to their users, get feedback on new ideas, and make sure the app is ready to go to production. To make it even easier for users to discover and join beta programs, we will allow users to join them directly from your store listing page on Google Play. This will help you grow larger beta programs and connect to more testers. Now, once you have beta testers, you want to get their feedback, right? You used to get the feedback through various sources and had to parse a lot of information. We will allow users to give you private feedback directly through Google Play. This feedback is private. It goes only to you, and you can see it in the Google Play Developer Console. Private means other users don't get to see it, and it doesn't impact your app star rating. Now, we believe that apps should run an open beta test even before they go to production. This is why we're introducing a new section called Early Access on Google Play. This section will feature exciting apps and games that are still in development, are running a beta test, and haven't launched to production yet. This will allow early adopters and influencers discover those apps, try them out, and give you valuable feedback, helping you find product market fit earlier and fine-tune your game's KPIs. In our first collection, we have 28 apps and games, as you can see here, with some pretty cool titles. For example, ReadFeed, an Android-first online book club, or Ava, the founder whose parents and sisters are deaf, created this app to help deaf people and people with hearing disabilities to participate in real-life conversations. We have Lego the kids and family power brand with their first ever in-house mobile game. It's a 3D Lego set you can touch, twist, and build, just like the brick sets we all grew up with. This is not just for free-to-play titles. Never Alone, a gorgeous game developed by Eline Media, who researched together with the Alaska natives, is coming to Google Play on early access as a premium title. We are sure that those changes that we're making to beta testing will help you grow even bigger beta programs get feedback from users, and make your apps and games even more awesome. Thank you. I'd like to invite Wei Chai, an engineering manager on Google Play. Thank you. Hi. 
I'm here to talk about some new feature for Play Apps Discovery. Google Play is the primary destination for discovering apps and games on Android. Today, we provide various ways in the store to assist users in finding new apps and to drive developer outcomes by helping you get discovered. Recently, we've been developing and experimenting with a new way for users to find new apps, contextual app discovery. It targets underlying needs that drive when and why you might need new apps. These needs could be the ones in our everyday life, such as learn something new, plan a vacation, or eat at home. Our user studies show that most users look for new apps at the time they need them. Therefore, we want to explicitly target the needs by building contextual collections of apps so that users can find complementary apps needed at the same time. It also makes it easier for users to find apps or types of apps they may not have heard of before coming to play. For example, imagine a user is searching for a wallpaper. We might recognize the user is interested in a broader need, personalize my phone, and show complementary apps, including not only wallpapers, but also personalizable keyboards, themes, and ringtones. Similarly, oh, let's take a look how it works. We identify the underlying needs based on user searches, views, context, and interest, and show complementary apps around the need on search result pages, app install pages, or home pages when it makes sense to do so. So another example, if the user is on app install page for Trulia, Maybe he or she is buying a house and will show great other apps for finding houses for sale, calculating your mortgage, and doing interior design. If a user is traveling to San Francisco, we might anticipate the user's needs for apps for the upcoming trip and show a collection of relevant apps for exploring San Francisco on the user's homepage. To further demonstrate the idea, if you look at your Play Store homepage now, for some of you, based on your interest and context, we are showing a collection of apps called Best of Google I.O., where you can find nominees of this year's Google Play Awards. Thank you. Now, I would like to introduce Fergus Hurley, Product Manager, Google Play. Thanks, Wei. Hi, everyone. My name is Fergus Hurley. I'm Product Manager in Google Play. I'm here to talk to you about reviews. So building on top of the phenomenal engagement that developers have had with the reply to reviews functionality, we've made a lot of enhancements to the ratings and reviews functionality on Play over the last few months. We've added being able to see your ratings over time, be able to see ratings break down ac across country, language, device, be able to uh, see the device metadata for each individual review, so you can be able to understand what was the RAM of that user on that device, and even be able to search within all the reviews. We've also enabled you to be able to now get an email notification when a user updates their review after you've responded. We also added highlights. These are snippets that users see when they come to your app listing page on the Play Store. And they can be able to see these to be able to make their purchase decision. You can be able to see them in the Play Developer Console, and you can be able to figure out which ones are the ones you want to be able to invest in more and be able to respond to the reviews that are happening in those highlights. This year at I.O., we announced reviews analysis. This includes two parts. The first part is topics. Topics are unique words that are relevant to your application. And we surface them. Uh, for example, for this language learning app, Klingon is the top uh, topic. Is, and you can see 
that there's the average effect on rating of each one of these and the volume distribution for each of these topics. We even tell you what is the effect that each one of these is having on your overall rating in the Play Store. The next part of the reviews analysis is benchmarks. Benchmarks shows you what are the common topics that people talk about your application and nearly all other applications on the Play Store. You can be able to see design, stability, resource usage, and then you can be able to see how you compare to the other apps in your category in the Play Store. We also show you what is the effect that each one of these common topics is having on your rating in the Play Store, so you can be able to prioritize your investment of your resources and even have your team be able to go in and be able to read all the reviews about design. For now, reviews analysis works for English only and only when you have a certain number of reviews that fall within these categories. So when we have all these reviews on the Play Store and we have this ability to be able to do reviews analysis on all the reviews, we said, let's have a look at all the reviews and see what are the th common topics that are impacting one-star and five-star reviews to help developers be able to prioritize their investments and be able to find out how to get a higher rating on Play. What we found is that across all the one-star reviews that have a common topic, 50% are about stability. So really investing in building a high-quality app that does not crash is really important. We also found that for when you want to get your app to a five-star app and you fix the stability issues, really investing in design, performance, and usability, and speed of your application is really, really important because that results in 65% of the five-star reviews. We also launched at I.O. this year the Reviews API. This enables you to be able to respond to your reviews on the Play Store with whatever workflow you use yourself to be able to do customer support. We partnered with Zendesk and Converse Social on this launch, and you can be able to use those tools today to be able to start responding to your Play Store reviews. Now I'm going to hand over to Ricardo Govani, who's the engineering manager on Play. Hello. So today, I'm here to give you tips on how you can better understand who your users are and where they come from. You're probably familiar with the user acquisition report that we launched in the Play Developer Console last year. It tells you how many store listing visitors installed your app and converted into buyers. And it does so by breaking the information down by acquisition channel. So you know how many people discovered your app organically in the Play Store versus coming from different channels, like your website or AdWords campaigns. Over the past year, we received great feedback about this feature, like this one from Trulia, and it helped many developers like you optimize your business in play. So you'll be happy to hear that we recently announced a new feature, being able to measure your user acquisition performance at a country level. And this is great when you're entering new markets, like emerging ones, like Brazil or India, and really optimize your app experience for all your users across the world. But optimizing your business performance in isolation is not really that helpful. How do you know, for example, if you look at your organic conversion rate, if it is as good as it could be, if you're leaving opportunities on the table? So right now, it's not that easy, but we're about to make it a lot better. So soon, we will be launching another great feature, benchmarks against your peers. So you will be able to compare how your store listing conversion rate fares against similar apps in your category. First, we'll provide an overall benchmark about your organic user acquisition performance. And this will give you an indication on how your store listing is performing globally. But more, you will be able, also able to measure your user acquisition performance at a country level against the benchmark at that level. For example, here, you can see that our app is getting some traction in Korea, but at 24%, we are lagging behind the benchmark. This is a moment where maybe you want to review the quality of your store listing translations or consider localizing your assets. We'll also give you an indication on how you're progressing against the benchmark, so you know if you still have room for improvement or if you're really among the best and aim for the top. And when you're ready to take action, Play Developer Console 
has plenty of features to help you optimize your store listing performance and your regional success, such as store listing experiments or app translation services. And we'll offer a recommendation about those right next to the benchmarking results when relevant. So this is everything I have in store for you today. I believe that with country breakdowns and benchmarks, you will be able to even better optimize your business in play. Benchmarks are going to roll out over the next few weeks. Country breakdowns is already there. Go give it a try. And now I'd like to introduce on stage Mona Vajulai, product manager on play. Thank you. Thanks, Ricardo. I'm here to talk about what we are doing in Google Play for the next billion users. Android is growing really fast in emerging markets. By 2018, we expect 1.2 billion new Android users to come online in emerging markets. In Google Play, we have been working really hard to make sure those users have a great experience, especially given some of the infrastructure challenges in those markets. One key pillar is to have a product and an ecosystem of apps that work well on slow connections and on low-end devices. Our user studies have shown over and over again that connectivity and data challenges affect all users in emerging markets, regardless of where they live or how much money they make. Connectivity challenges are here to stay. By 2020, still 300 million users in India will be on connection types that are equivalent of 2G. And even when Wi-Fi is available, it is often patchy and unreliable. So one of the key areas of focus for us in Google Play has been to build an experience that is fast, lightweight, and reliable, where every user, regardless of their connection type, can find and download apps that meet their needs. Over the past year, we have optimized the performance of the Play Store app and made it much faster on 2G. We have also reduced the amount of data used by the store itself and for key activities like downloading apps and updating apps. These changes have brought more users to the store. They visit the store more often, and they download more apps. We also know that our users everywhere, especially in emerging markets, want a store experience that reflects their local interests and the needs of their country and their region. We've been working closely with local developers in markets like India and Brazil to make sure those apps reach their local audience in the store. In addition, we've been supercharging our editorial content in the store to make sure users are able to easily find locally relevant apps that meet the needs of different segments of users in the market. And with that, I'd like to bring up to stage Kunal Soni, who is the head of Apps and Games Business Development in Southeast Asia. Thank you. Thanks, Mona. Hi, everyone. I'm here to talk to you about creating great quality apps that will work effectively, not just for smartphone users today, but also for the next billion users as they get connected in the years to come. We're seeing incredible momentum in emerging markets all around the world. They're expected to account for 80% of total smartphone growth globally. In order to be relevant and successful in these markets, it's important for us to design the right app experience aimed at solving three important challenges. Firstly, while 4G and LTE and other network technologies will grow fast, there will still be 1 billion mobile internet users in 2020 who will be on 2G. That's a sizable segment for you to think about and solve for. Secondly, mobile data speeds vary a lot across markets, requiring you to tailor the app experience accordingly. And finally, data is expensive relative to income levels in several markets. And therefore, helping your users manage their data cost should be an important priority. In order to help you tackle these challenges and support your growth, we've identified a set of tools and best practices that we believe can help you. This is what is called the Building for Billions framework, focused on three important areas, connectivity, device compatibility, and data cost. By the way, what I'm covering here is by no means limited to emerging markets. These principles will apply equally well across the world. 
Let's start by looking at connectivity. In order to optimize for unreliable or intermittent connectivity, ensure that your app prioritizes bandwidth requests, fetching text before rich media or data. Ensure that you offer a great offline experience so that all your users can interact with the app at all times, regardless of a connectivity, using cached data. Let's talk about devices. Many devices in emerging markets have smaller, lower resolution screens. In order to ensure a seamless user experience across devices, use density independent pixels while defining app layouts. Ensure that your graphics and text work well on low and medium density screens. And adjust your memory footprint dynamically to ensure compatibility across devices with different RAM configurations. Finally, let's talk about data cost. The first cost your users will incur will be related to the cost of installation of your app. And therefore, it's important to keep on a tight focus on reducing the APK size, ideally well below 10 megabytes. In order to accomplish this, you should reduce the number and size of images within the APK using tools like WebP and Scalable Vector Graphics, or SVG. You can shrink the code size of your APK using tools like ProGuard, which, re which remove unused code. And finally, you can consider multi-APK as an option to create APKs split by density so that users target the right version of the app that specifically targets their device density. With that, we come to the end of my session. If you're interested to know more, do join us for the session on Building for Billions on Android today at 3 p.m. Next, I'd like to invite Milena Nikolic, Engineering Manager on Google Play. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kunal. Hi, I'm Milena, Engineering Manager on Google Play. Um, I'm here to talk to you about Play Console app. Yes, we finally launched uh, an Android app for Google Play Developer Console. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have to admit that it took us a while. It took us much longer than it took you guys, but we've made it. And uh, we can tell you this app stuff is pretty sweet. We, we really like it now. Um, our new app uh, can help you follow the, the performance of your app on Google Play and do time-critical actions on the go. When you're rapidly iterating, you need a powerful tool that's in your pocket all the time. And we've built Play Console app exactly with those use cases in mind. Whether you're looking to quickly reply to a user review or to show off the performance of your app when running to a meeting, Play Console app should be there to support you. Regarding an initial feature set, obviously you can check installs and uninstalls of your app, and you can break them down based on the number of different dimensions, including country, device, app version, and much more. In addition to that, you can check out crash reports, including hourly data and full stack traces. You can also follow your app's ratings and reviews, and you can reply to reviews. You can also follow the state of your release as it moves from beta through stage rollout all the way to production and much more. Oh, also, you can get push notifications when something important happens with your app, for example, when your app update goes live. App is now available on Google Play. In the last 24 hours since we launched it, more than 10,000 developers installed it and rated it at 4.85 uh, stars on average. Um, if you're not among those 10,000 developers, please, please go and install it. We think you'll find it very useful. Uh, also, we are very keen to hear your feedback, so please send us any feedback that you have. We plan to work on it. We plan to add much more, ver uh, much more functionality in the next couple of versions. And if you're still not convinced, please do come visit us in the Play Sandbox, where you can see it in action for yourself. Thank you. <laughs> next, I would like to invite Suresh Ganapati and Shobhana Ravi. Thanks, Milena. So we showed you a sneak preview of Android and Synapse, the keynote yesterday. Today, I want to tell you a little bit more about how to build Android and Synapse and the new opportunities that this could open up. First, let's do a quick recap of the announcement yesterday for those of you who weren't around. 
So Android Instant Apps lets you access apps by simply tapping on links, even if you don't have the app installed. As a developer, this means that this is just an upgrade to your existing Android app. This is not a new separate app. It's compatible with Android Jelly Bean and up, and will reach over a billion users. Now, we understand that this is a big change, and we want to get it right. So we're going to be rolling this out gradually to both users and developers over the next year. So let's talk about how you'd upgrade your app to run instantly. As a developer, you start by telling us the links to your domain that your app can open. This is really easy to do with Android app links, which we announced last year. Next, if your app is really big, you may want to consider splitting it into modules. This allows Google Play to download only the parts of the app that are required on the fly when the user taps on a link. Next, we think that users may have slightly different expectations of what an app can do when it's running instantly. So instant apps will not have access to some capabilities, like creating a home screen widget. Finally, we're building a whole new set of features for instant apps that we want you to take advantage of. My favorite is runtime permissions. Android instant apps will use runtime permissions going all the way back to Jelly Bean. Now I want to talk a little bit about some new opportunities that instant apps could open up. We've hacked together a couple of fun demos that I want to show you as examples. Can we switch to the demo feed, please? OK. So instant apps lets you deliver the same rich and immersive experiences to both users who have installed your app and the ones who haven't. So the demo here is my buddy Jay created this really cool photo sharing app. It can capture panoramas and display them in a really unique way. Now, he sent me a picture that he captured with his app when he was on a trip to Machu Picchu. I really want to see the picture that he shared, but I'm not quite sure if I want to install the app as yet. With instant apps, this is not a problem. All I have to do is tap a link. With one tap, the app opens up instantly, deep linked right to the panorama that Jake shared. It even uses the sensors on the phone to pan the image as Shobana moves the device. Isn't that amazing? Thank you. At the other end of the spectrum, Instant Apps also lets you create very lightweight apps that don't even have to take the user out of context of what they were doing. Shobana and I recently made plans to go to a concert. So I booked my tickets as a Shins concert, and I sent her a message asking her to book hers. Now, she doesn't have the ticketing app on her phone. When she taps the link, the app opens up instantly. But it didn't open up as a full screen app. It opened up just as a dialog. It has all the information she needs pre-filled. Her seats are right next to mine. And with Android Pay, it's one tap to pay. All of this while the Hangouts app is still in the background. Shobana, thank you. Shobana didn't have to leave her conversation with me to buy these tickets. This can be really interesting if you want to help the user complete a simple task with as little friction as possible. So those are the two examples that we have for you today. Uh, can we switch back, please? Can we switch back to the slides? Will be just a moment. Perfect. I wanted you to see the, the URL so you can learn more. So if you go to g.co forward slash instant apps, you can learn more. Uh, there, there is a sign up form if you're interested in upgrading your app to run instantly. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Purnima Kochikar, who leads Play's global business development team on stage. Thank you. Thank you, Suresh. How many think that instant apps are amazing? You know, I have been so excited. I was in an Uber this morning, and it was on the radio. And I was like thrilled to bits. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Purnima Kochikar, and I work for you. My team and I have the great privilege to work with each and every one of you to help you build successful businesses on Google Play. 
Android powers increasingly new screens across new markets, empowering people across the world. And it is this scale that allows Google Play to provide you the largest app distribution platform in the world. Let's look at some numbers. In 2015, one billion monthly active users across 190 countries drove 65 billion installs on Google Play. <laughs> Mind-boggling, isn't it? In 2015, the number of game developers who had a game with more than one million installs grew by over 50%, which means more people are being successful. And if you look back and you say, okay, there is installs, there is more installs per game, but are we making money? In 2015, the average spend per user across play grew by over 30% when compared to 2014. So as you can see, we have a very thriving community waiting for the things that you create. These are incredibly impressive numbers, but none of it would be possible without you, our developer community. So where I sit on a daily basis, we see developers across the world, big and small, creating apps that change lives and games that delight. Each day, my team and I are inspired and humbled by how you are taking your personal passions and converting them into successful businesses. I hope the video that Ellie shared with you was as inspirational to you as it is to us. Over the last year, we connected with one million of you across various channels to help you understand and access the tools we are building, as well as to tell you about the market opportunities that are there in front of you. You heard today, emerging markets, the mar you know, new ways to build your business, all these tools really help you build your business. Now, here's the interesting thing. Each of those instances, we learned. We figured out how to improve our products. So I hope you will take the time to visit us in the sandbox to tell us how we can do things better. And I'm also excited to see what you will do with the new capabilities that we have announced today. We also use this opportunity to get you connected with each other. How many of you are sitting with people that you already know? Should you be? So I hope you take this opportunity to really step out and meet each other, understand what everybody is doing. There is people from around the globe here today. It is a unique opportunity. And therefore, I am extremely excited to announce the very first Google Play Awards this evening, 7 p.m. at stage seven. You can't forget that. 7 p.m. at stage seven. So please come to see the great apps and games that are being showcased. Get inspired, join us. Thank you very much for coming. And here's how you can keep in touch with us. We hope to see you this evening at 7 p.m. Thank you.